All right, welcome back. So in this lesson, what I'd like to do is I'd like to take the knowledge that we've gained throughout all this testing and playing, and I'd like to implement it in our user interface application. All right, so what I'd like to do is I'd like to add a timer, right? So at the end of the play, I'd like to create a timer. We could say that we could invoke the play F12 function took it a while so this is the play function in the play function everything is okay we're going to comment out the wait for completion so that it returns right away but if it returns right away it's going to tear down the graph so that's not such a good idea we don't want to tear down the graph right because we have not yet completed playing all right so, but after we come back from invoking the play function, we would like to start a timer. And when the timer will go off, that's when we'll tell the graph to get the event and see if it's finished. And if yes, if no, we'll deal with it properly. Now, in normal applications, when the user clicks on play, so you start playing, but you turn the menu item gray. And when the playing is complete, you turn the menu item back into, you, you make it enabled again, right? You disable it, and then you enable it. All right, so maybe we'll forget about enabling, disabling for now, but at least I'd like to get a message box telling me that uh, playback is complete. So that's going to be our mission. All right, so at this point, I'd like to create a timer. But just before that, let, let's run and see how it behaves now, right? Because we commented out the weight. So it's going to tear down right away. So let's see how it behaves. It should stop, theoretically, right? If we release all the resources, that should cause the graph to stop. So play, right? You hear nothing. And if you want to follow it, so let's go back here and put a breakpoint here and go back here and file play F11 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 10 very nice 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 so we asked it to run however the next thing we're going to do is we're going to release and release and release and uninitialize so, are we really surprised that we cannot hear anything? And just to make sure that, right, that we're, we're correct, let's again do it. And this time, F11, let's reinstate the code. So, let's get up to here. F5, and re-enable this code. And F5, it's applying... F5. So, let's test it, one, two, three. Right, so that's the difference. So the difference is whether we have or do not have the weight. So the weight causes causes everything to malfunction, not malfunction, but but causes the graph not to play. So we cannot allow ourselves to tear down the graph just because the play function is over. Right, and this is this is a normal application. A normal application cannot cannot wait and cannot tear down. So we need to redesign our application so that it's, it's more proper. Right, so we, we need to have a nicer architecture than just a function, create, 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 play, wait. We don't care that the world is not, is, is not running when we're running and then oh we're finished everything everybody else can go back to work that that's not a normal application a normal application has to work within normal surroundings that other things have to be allowed in the interim while we're working everything has to work together so we need a better architecture so basically what we would like to be able to do is not tear down the graph at this point but rather let's say for now when the playback is complete so the way so okay so we'll work in steps not do everything in one in one shot all right but we'll come back to all these ideas later on hopefully
All right, so at this point, let me just get a sip of water. Excuse me. So at this point, what I'd like to do, right, so we're invoking play, that's nice, but forget about uh, being notified when it's finished. It will be finished when it will be finished. That's not the point now. Right now, it's not running. Period. So we cannot tear down the graph at this point. All right. So what do we do? That's a very good question. So, so, so all the code that tears down, let's separate it. So let's have a function that plays. Let's have it this way. Initially, we'll do it manually. We'll be able to play, and you know what even? Ignore this. This is just an upload. We don't care for this. You know what? Like this. We will have, let's look at, let's look at our menu. So we have play. Let's have a stop function. Right, this function is just going to tear down the graph. That's all it's going to do. Because we see that it, when we tear down the graph, it does the job of stopping. So might as well stop the graph, have a stop function. So the play function is just going to build the graph and start playing it, but not tear it down. Excuse me. And the stop function is just going to tear down the graph. That's all. And normally the way it's going to work, at this point, is that the user is going to click play, it's going to listen, and when the user notices that the playback is finished, the user is going to click stop. So what we're going to get actually, it should be a responsive application, right? It's just not going to be aware, the application is not going to be aware of when playback is complete. Alright, so... Okay, we're working in steps, so that's okay for now. All right, so let's add the stop function. So we'll have a play and a stop. So let's stop running the application. Go back to our menu. R down arrow, insert on the keyboard F2, percent and stop. Again stop like this stop enter f4 tab copy control f6 control f6 very good so this is going to be our case control v break and we saw that the red line doesn't mean anything okay so here we're going to stop Great. So let's now go and implement stop. So F12 on play. That's not what I wanted, but okay. Control F6 like this, like this. Okay. So for now, it's just going to return zero, and this is going to be the stop function. Let's have it display a message box to see that everything is working properly for zero separated by commas copy this go to player H control V semicolon okay F6 no control just F6 seems to be working fine let's try F5 File, play, F9, F5, F9, F5, mm, should we have expected anything? To hear something, see something? No, because the graph is still, right? The graph, but play, builds, plays, destroys. So we, the, the, we, we can't hear anything. And stop immediately displays the OK. That's very nice. OK. That's good. Now, um, all right, so the next thing would be 
to have play actually play something. Play shouldn't not play something. So all of this code that actually does the tear down, let's remove it, let's move it to a separate function, and this is actually going to be the stop function. That's good. So let's take this block, control S, and let's actually invoke stop here, right? Because that's but no, we don't want to invoke stop here. No, we don't. No, we don't. Nope. No, we don't. All right, so let's go to our new stop function. Instead of the message box, control V. And very nice. All right, so this is our stop function. All right, and immediately, let, let's do F6. Let's see what the Visual Studio tells us, F8, and what it tells us is that P graph is an undeclared identifier. So obviously we cannot tear anything down if we don't have these variables available. Alright, so what we need is to expose the variables, take them out of the function. So what I'll do is, right, we need the three variables, as you can see, we need the P graph, P control, and P event. We're missing them. So we'll have to turn these into global variables. Control X, enter, control V, enter, enter, or control X, control X. Mark them and shift tab them. You don't need to initialize global variables. They are initialized to zero. That is what the documentation says. All right, so that's pretty good. So F6, will this compile? F8 undeclared identifier. Why? Because it's at the bottom and we need to move it to the top. So let's have all our variables over here or like this. F6. Alright, that seems to be pretty good. F5, let's try and run it. Let's see. Play to the file. So let's test it. One, two, three. That's good. And stop. Let's try actually to play to the file. And I stopped it whenever I wanted to stop it. That's also very nice. Play to the file. So let's say stop. I stopped it whenever I wanted to stop it. By the way, what happens if I just stop? Nothing. Why? Because we have, right? Because we reset the pointers to null and we ask if the pointers are null. So invoking stop after stop is not detrimental. What about play after play? To the file. So let's test it. One, two, three. So let's test it. One, two, three. So actually we ran it. It ran twice consecutively. What did just happen? What just happened was that we play, play created a graph and started running it and then it created another graph and started running it. So what you see is that an application can create multiple graphs and have them all running at the same time. It's not a problem. It is a problem that the play button is available. That's another problem. We'll ignore that for now, right? Because the user normally doesn't want to be able to do something like this. Alright, so that was our first step. I see that we're out of time. So we're going to stop here, and in the next lecture we'll continue with the steps that we promised, hopefully. Alright, so we're going to stop here, and we'll continue this in the next lecture. Thank you very much, and we'll see you again.